Welcome back. Our statement today reads, A very long cylinder of radius A carries a uniform polarization P perpendicular to its axis. Find the electric field inside the cylinder. Show that the field outside the cylinder can be expressed in the form as seen here. The solution is, since the polarization is uniform and perpendicular to the cylinder's primary axis, we can formulate the problem in a new light. Let's think of it as two cylinders of opposite uniform charge density, plus or minus rho. So to find the electric field inside, we simply use Gauss's law, where we have the surface integral and the Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Well, this is a cylinder, so the surface area is 2 pi s times L, and the Q enclosed is rho times the volume of a cylinder, which is pi s squared times L. You see we get nice cancellations, and we end up with the electric field equals rho s over 2 epsilon naught in the s hat direction. This s hat can be broken down into the s vector, and we see that the s is canceled from the magnitude, and we're left with this. From this, we can construct two such cylinders, one positive and one negative, and then we can add them together to find the net field. This net field is E plus plus E minus, where those are the directions based on the polarization. From the charge density rho. So a little bit of factoring gets us to the expression where we're just worried about the S vectors, which if you recall, the dipole is from the negative to the positive, so that so adding them together in this fashion is just the negative uh, displacement vector d. From here we can see what the uh, total dipole moment of a chunk of length l is, again with more cancellations, and we just get that the polarization is rho times the displacement vector d. So you can see we have the electric field in terms of rho in the displacement vector and the polarization for inside the cylinder. Now for outside the cylinder we get a little more mess because things don't cancel as well. Again we'll use Gauss's law the surface area of the cylinder outside is 2 pi SL, but the Q enclosed only goes up to the radius A of the physical cylinder. So you see our cancellations only work with pi and L, but the radii still have to be accounted for in both cases. So solving for the E field, we see that we have rho A squared over 2S epsilon naught in the S hat direction. Since the S here is the variable of concern, we'll put the S with the S hat direction and we'll put that as its own fraction for the modification we see below. Where again, the net field is E plus plus E minus. So we have S plus hat over S plus plus S minus hat over S minus. Since our goal is to write the electric field in terms of the displacement vector D, we can use the definition of D to write S plus or minus is equal to S plus or minus D over two, because that's just the average of adding the two together. Then we can substitute that in for the fraction S subscript plus or minus divided by S squared plus or minus, where you see that is equal to the first term in the parentheses, which is the numerator, and the next term in the parentheses is the denominator, which is denoted with the negative one. Factoring this out with an expansion, we can pull a one over S squared out, and then we're left with a lot of plus or minus signs and that negative one. Moving along with this approximation scheme, we see that the inverse simply switches the signs to plus or minus, and we can move along to expand these parentheses into what we see here. Be very careful with the plus or minus orientations of the signs, and we're only keeping the first order terms in D. This will allow us to substitute this approximation into the electric field and further simplify down. So let's first simplify down the subtraction of the two s vectors divided by their magnitudes, and we see that we can expand these and simplify down and cancel out whatever is needed, leaving us with 1 over s squared parentheses 2 times s times s dot d over s squared minus d. Substitute that into the E field, and we see that we can further combine this, uh, these parameters down into the form we wish to see. The red row and the blue displacement vectors D lead us to the purple polarization vector, and the vector S divided by its magnitude leads us to the green S hat vectors.